Boys and girls, welcome to the 13 Nights of Halloween. A That Gets My Goat Marathon with Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hi everybody, welcome back to the 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And we're going to pick up where we left off last night? That's right. Yeah, it's time to discuss the story, to discuss it, as I said yesterday. <laughs> okay, so uh, when we did your story, we uh, talked a little bit about what your intentions were. And uh, it's weird because you and I have a history of writing stories with similar themes, not intending to. I mean, sometimes there's an assignment, but a lot of times... We both had a conversation and we both went off and wrote a story about it. And, and in this case, it's similar to that because you wrote a story about balloons, a horror story about balloons. <laughs> and I last year, if you listened to the 13 Nights of Halloween, we did an episode about moths and people's fear of moths. And I, I'm just not afraid of moths and neither were you. So it was a really short episode. It was a waste of time, frankly. It would be like <laughs> asking about, I don't know, a a, a British action stars movies or something like that. It just, it went nowhere. And so I decided to see if I could make a scary story about moths. Uh -huh. Hence, there's that. Yeah. So you're, you're waiting for me to say you blew it. You can, if you'd like, <laughs> that's fine. I mean, but it's, it's a challenge. Like we were saying on this, the, the balloon one, you know, with Stephen King writing stories about things that, like a, a what was the mangler? It was a laundry press or something like that that was haunted, or a haunted hotel room, or a haunted car, or a what haunted. What was the one that you mentioned in the episode? The chattery teeth. Yes, the chattery teeth. That's right. <laughs> haunted chattery teeth. He he wrote one, a wonderful scary story called the monkey about one of those wind up monkeys with the symbols. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Had a paw that granted wishes, but only in evil ways. Oh, well, that was somebody else. <laughs> that was Dean Koontz, I think. Um, <laughs> so. I won't say that you blew it, because I think you, there was some really good stuff in this. I, th I think you perhaps cheated a little bit, because they weren't just moths. They were like super disease-carrying moths, you know what I mean? Which is kind of unfair because you can make anything scary if it's a super disease carrying thing because then it's suddenly a hundred times more sinister than it is but all the same the the stuff that you did in the story i think was really effective you know the parts where he's in there in the room and you keep hearing the pong 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 you know noise i mean it says flick in the story which which isn't appropriate i mean it is I mean, what would else? a better sound have been I don't know. There's not a good way to write that sound because it's it's a like I was saying, it's like kind of a poom, 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 but you can't write that. You can make it with your mouth, but you can't write it. So it's hard to do. But yeah, that I mean, you say the flick, flick, and I can imagine it in my head hearing that sound, and it, it is scary. I mean, it's that you know, I kept imagining what I expected was going to happen, and and in this case, I mean. It, See, in a way, like it could have been like the Stephen King uh, creep show story where all of a sudden the cockroaches are just everywhere somehow kind of a thing. You know what I'm talking about? Where I think that could have been a way to have made the mods really scary without making them super mods. But I, that, that was kind of what I kept thinking was going to happen because he was turning off the lights. He saw nothing. I expected the end. He turns on the lights and just like the whole cabin is just lined with moths everywhere and then they just come after him or something like that was what i was expecting what i was seeing in my mind's eye mm -hmm. and you know that might have been a better way to go the the story behind this story is that we did go to the cabin and this was in july i think when i i said that the plague happened it was yeah we had this freak rainstorm and so nobody could do anything and everybody decided to go to sleep and i stayed up in the dark and read uh, the all of our submissions for that contest for the for the triple word score contest uh -huh. and at one point the rain stopped and suddenly the moths came out 
And it was like that. They kept interrupting me when I would read the story with a little at the window. And all I had was the light of the laptop on. Um, and they still were desperate to get it and, back. Oh, they were so – they so wanted to get in. And see, I love moths. I think they're awesome. I don't think they're frightening in any way. I just think they're, they're beautiful. And, and so I, at one point, I actually went out and just you know started eating them. <laughs> I went outside, you know, and Tasted grabbed at them and think. caught them, and because I just, just the I like the texture, and I know that people don't. But as I went in, I I just kept thinking about it and thinking, well, but what if, what if you were horribly afraid of moths? What if that texture bothered you in a way that it doesn't to me? And I and there, I know there are people out there that just hate that the the dust that's on their wings. And so I started to write this story, and I just started it with the noise at the window, you know, and and, and the guy chain smoking, and, and I forgot about the chain smoking because I guess that would make a light too. I don't know. Pretty small light, though. Not nearly as much as the lights in the room would make. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe I could have developed that. Would a moth fly toward the the little orange <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't light know. at the end of a cigarette? But so I just started it there. With the guy, oh, no, you know, they're trying to get in. They want to get in at me. Then I had to come up with a story around that. And maybe, yeah, if they had just liked the taste of human flesh, that would have been stronger. But I was trying to think, well, why would a guy, would it, why would a grown man be afraid of moths? And, yeah, I came up with, like, the most ludicrous <laughs> excuse, really. That's all it was, was I had my scene of the moths trying to get in. The guy's like, please don't let him get in. And I had to make something up around that. In a way, it's probably too silly. The whole, what the Genital moths do. Mutilation. But at the same time, I was just trying to, I was thinking about stuff that scares us. Uh-huh. And that's, that's you know, just the, the, the idea that something wants to harm your junk is really upsetting <laughs> to every guy. Isn't it? Probably, yeah. And so, yeah, that, I don't know. When you were reading it, I was like, oh, I, I felt like I'd made a lot of mistakes in this story. <laughs> the, the line about, uh, the line about the Manfred that's Mann song. Nice. I, I should have cut that out, but it's just always bugged me that the line is deuce and that the guy says douche again and again and again. Nobody said, hey, hey could, let's do another take where you say deuce. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. You talk for a minute. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I thought it would be cool if he turned on the light and there was, you know, the whole place was lined with moss, but that wouldn't work with the story that you'd set up. You know what I mean? It's not like moths. Yes, they were more aggressive, but they didn't like smother people they just infected them and made them want to stab their junk out and i really liked the way that you pulled off that transition too you know he got he gets infected with by the moth and then he's went to the kitchen like he'd planned to all along kind of a thing <laughs> which i thought was kind of funny because it confused me at first i'm like what he didn't plan to go to the kitchen he planned to go to the bathroom and oh you know, this is one of those moments where I, I enjoyed that. I, I thought it worked out well the way you did end it, even though it wasn't what I was expecting. Probably what I was expecting wouldn't have worked for the story anyways. It would have been better with a different story, like some guy who's deathly afraid of moths because his sister stuck one down his pants when he was a kid or something like that. And so anytime they come around, he gets scared. And But why would they swarm at him and, and kill him at the end? Because... Because it's a story? They're evil... Well, okay. I, I don't know. It's way you know. A lot of times with stories, you don't have to explain that. You just it happens. That's there's, true. There's no good reason for it. That happens a lot, I think, in stories and in life, really, too. There's not always a reason behind things, even though we, as humans, and pattern finders, as I've heard, that's you know one of the things that made us evolve above the others in the uh, early days is because we were able to make patterns out of things, and therefore understand our world good enough to make tools i guess i don't know whatever you know to rise above and that's just what we do we see something we don't just go oh that's it's weird that's a coincidence that doesn't mean anything no we assign meaning to it no matter what well hey remind me i, I can't remember what we said last year uh, do moths frighten you at all no not really i guess they're kind of gross I wouldn't want to like hold them or put them in my mouth or <laughs> you look at them. me because you know I do or uh, you know put a bunch of them in my bed sheets and sleep with them or any of the things that you really enjoy. I'm, I'm kind of not into those. I don't know. It's it, they they can be kind of creepy, 
Um, I was actually at a, a soccer game the other night. And I do not know what, because this has never happened at any, I've been to dozens and dozens of games at this stadium. Um, and your team won? <laughs> wow, that, I can't this believe it either. Around, they actually won. No, actually, they failed miserably, which really upset me. But on top of that, the moths came in and were just going nuts for the stadium lights. They were everywhere. They were flying, and there was thousands upon thousands of moths. I don't know if it's just this... It's got to be the time, time of, year. of year or what it was, but there was thousands of them and they were, you know how moths, they like, they're like drunken, I don't know. They're Trap like, boys. Yeah. They're like the worst flyers ever. Like how can they fly? These are insects that do, it's like people that when they walk, they just like crash into walls and like trip over every rock on the ground or something. I mean, that's how the way a moth flies. It just like, and like bounces off your back and. They were doing this like crazy everywhere. They were basically like falling out of the sky. Landing on people? Yeah, landing on people. The guy right next to me had a big moth just on his back. Dude, that's cool to me. But And it was just sitting there. How, wait, how big? I had a normal sized moth. I don't know. Okay. It wasn't like huge or anything. But it was just sitting there on his back. And, you know, they, they kept coming by and they'd like brush against you. And you're like, ah, it's in my hair. You know, they were everywhere. And I kept seeing this one on this guy's back, you know, and he would turn and see them crash and be like, oh, there's a moth over there. And I'm like, dude, you got one on your back. And I, <laughs> I kept thinking of tapping him on the shoulder and say, hey, dude, do I have a big moth on my back? And he'd be like, no, no, you got a, because you do. <laughs> I mean, how do you tell, hey, you got a moth on your back? Or do you just try and brush it off without touching him or something? I don't know. It's just... They were everywhere. It was that was actually fairly creepy how they just were falling out of the sky like wounded pelicans, because that's what pelicans do when they're wounded. They fall out. Of the sky. It's a good metaphor. It is. It works. Are, are there a lot of wounded pelicans? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's an oil-covered pelican. Okay. From a spill in the bayou. But yeah, they they were just dropping like flies. Uh, I don't know. It was just really creepy and kind of weird how many there were. It was like your story. Just like, what's wrong with these moths and why are there so many here? <laughs> <laughs> They're, oh, they, they must be in my pants. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was strange. And, I you know, I didn't get freaked out by it. There was a lot of girls that were, like, standing around me where one would come down. They'd be like, ah, ah, it's on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> there was little of that. And I guess they're fairly large. And they're also fairly thick. You know what I mean? Like you would think a big flying insect couldn't be that thick, but I guess there's lots of insects. That, like all beetles have wings. And there's some pretty dang big beetles out there that must fly. Cockroaches. I've seen some friggin' giant cockroaches that fly. So something like that, you know, big fat insect you wouldn't think should be flying. And yeah, when it thumps down onto you, that's kind of creepy. But it's not something that scares me. I don't see it and think, oh, gosh, I better walk around. Better go the other way. Like you would if you see like a bee buzzing around somewhere or something. You'd be like, oh, I'll just go over here because they sting. And moths just don't. They just kind of flail around like a drunk. So uh, do you feel that you succeeded or didn't succeed with your story in making moths scary? I don't know. All I could, All I could hear was the shortcomings of the story while you were reading it that bothers me and yeah i i wonder well why did i choose to make him a, maybe a less sympathetic character yeah like you made him you said at one point that he had mounted a few waitresses that weren't entirely willing or something like something that something like that yeah push himself on someone i guess yeah that does make him fairly non-sympathetic but I think the story is postul is saying that all men are that, uh -huh. whether they are or not. Because clearly the originator of this plague said that we had brought it upon ourselves. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is the uh, militant feminism, I guess, of the plague. The woman who made it said, yeah, now you get to find out what it's like to be afraid of a male, a male member. member yeah and i'm i'm I, uh, that's another thing when you said male member i was just like okay no read it the way i wrote it don't, don't <laughs> say that that's ridiculous and there were two 
by his own hands in there. And it's like, okay, I couldn't really have written by his own hand <laughs> twice, but I did. They can't all be classics, folks. They can't all be old man's war. <laughs> well, how much uh, time did you get to, did you really, I mean, how many rewrites did this go through to fix any little things like that that you disliked? Yeah, just one. I sent it in an email to you today and you found some typos and stuff that I... Yeah, a couple of things. You wrote genials once instead of genitals. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked him right in the Gentiles, man. Yeah. You know, it's funny because you were saying that, like, as we'd read along, you're like, oh, why didn't he just do this? <laughs> kind of a thing you know it's like when you're watching the horror movie at the theater and you're just like no no don't go in there you idiot don't Turn split around. up yeah it, it was kind of like that where you kept thinking things like that like he talks about his hazmat suit or whatever it was that he was wearing and now it's safely packed away in the truck where he isn't and i was just like why is it in the truck that doesn't make sense or and yeah i, th I think I meant for him to, you know, he had packed everything up in the truck and he was about to get in the truck and go. And then he's like, I barely made it here when it was light. You know, I, I couldn't keep the truck on the road. You know, there was no visibility when it was light. And now I won't make it back. So I've got to just go back in the house and sleep or, you know, and, and wait until light. But I, I think that needed a clarifying line there. Yeah, a line or two to say why it was tucked away in the car and he wasn't with it for some reason. And you did mention, oh, why didn't he just grab some blankets and get underneath them and stay in there safe? That's, I think, also what you have, what they call first readers or trusted readers or whatever you want to call them, where they read your story over and will point out plot holes to you so that you don't miss those and have your characters do things that are not smart for no good reason kind of a thing. And obviously you didn't have time to do this. You wrote this for the marathon and basically you just had time to get stretched and then get go, get started onto the marathon. You know, you didn't really have time to first reader it out. Do you have first readers? Is that something you ever do with your stories? Lots of times you've been my first reader, but, but <laughs> that's sort of gone away too. Only sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I had friends that I would always pass things on to you know oh i can't wait to find out what he thinks um that's sort of gone away yeah somebody out there should be my first reader i don't know if it would have strengthened this story but i certainly would have had him at least consider wrapping blankets around himself and just said you know breathing shallowly through the night we could have come up with an excuse for him to, for the, him not to do that too yeah be sure that there was something in the blanket with him and he's just like oh I, I, I gotta turn on the light and make sure there's not you know, I thought I felt something crawling inside with yeah. me with that stifling blanket around me. Yeah, uh, that and that, that's when he could see the one on the ceiling. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that would totally work. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure a little bit more work on this story and, and now a lot of those holes would be filled with putty. But yeah, I thought it was a good story. I thought you did a, a pretty good job trying to make us scared of moths. If this were a real scenario, uh, what would you do? Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of moths out in this neck of the woods, I guess. Uh, yeah, you'd have to make sure you're home before dark. You wear a steel cup. I would have to work at Channel 5 so I could be that guy's favorite uh, news specialist. <laughs> All the time, in case you get taken by the uh, desire to cut your genteels off, you could... Uh, Stupid Gentiles. Not, not get through that plastic protector. I just have to wear a cod piece at all times. <laughs> uh, shoot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's one of those things where, yeah, maybe you tape up your windows and all that kind of stuff. You, you do the uh, the home homeland security thing with the, the plastic sheeting and the duct tape and uh, seal everything off. But, you know, the, the, you can't because... You got to still live. It's not like we've all got years and years worth of food and we'd be happy living cooped up in a house for the rest of our lives kind of a thing. So I don't know. I found it interesting when the story started and we had the news people and stuff still going on. And then this guy talks about, oh, yeah, and there's this giant 
plague or whatever going on. I don't know why, but it seems like, hey, there's a plague. Then society's broken down and fallen apart kind of a thing. But in this case, it hadn't. It said that 70% or 30% of... There were only 30% were men, uh, 30% men left. 30% left. So 70% were dead. That seems like an overwhelming enough number that the society would be in big trouble. But it's just men. True. But still, that's a lot of people. 70%. See, the fact that society continues on does make this a feminist piece. <laughs> there you go. They, they may not all be dead either. It just said that thirty per, only 30% of men were alive and whole. Ah. Okay. Anyway, now I'm rearranging deck chairs, huh? But yeah, that was a good story, man. It was, it was interesting stuff. All right. Well, thank you for uh, indulging me. We do a lot of my stories on the show anyway. Yeah, that's all right. That's what this show is supposed to be for. Really? Your stories and my stories. That's our new mission, is to get them out there. And this week we did that. One of each. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully everyone listening had a good time with them. And uh, yeah, you can look forward to more of them because we've got several in the pipe plugging it up unfortunately clogging the pipe but uh yeah we've got one that we wrote together we've got a few that we've written separately they're all on their way yeah if we, we could only do other people's stories in between it, <laughs> it's just like if it became uh what was the failed cities monologues podcast variant frequencies yeah if it could become variant frequencies then we would have episodes all the time <laughs> Definitely we'll have stories aplenty of other people to run in between with our That's true. triple word score stories. So you don't have to worry about it becoming solely us. All right. Well, let's sign off and get to work on one of those. Okay. Yeah. So that, does that bring us to a close we'll or are we going to do a closing one. episode? Don't okay. you think? True. Sure. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the last of our stories and our discussion of our stories. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again tomorrow, folks. Have a nice evening that gets my goat is produced under a creative commons non-commercial 3.0 license boy they must really think a lot of themselves and this story was written especially for our marathon or ish (laughs) well i don't have to say that if you don't like it i i just mine was written for the 13 nights of Halloween. And I didn't know if yours was as well. It wasn't written especially for the marathon, but I thought it would fit perfectly into the marathon because it is the right length and it was a, supposed to be a scary story. So well, we'll talk about whether you succeeded or not after the story. Uh, after the story, I thought it's the cast list. <laughs> uh, you know what? We'll do that too. Oh, okay.